Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, and in this video we are going to be looking at bounding rectangle collision detection in Allegro 5. Oh, this is exciting for me. I get to use my new shell code, if you will. Um, something I probably should have been doing this whole time, but you know, what are you going to do? Uh, so, basically, in this video we are going to be looking at the, uh, in my opinion, one of the, the more simple collision detection methods which is called a bounding rectangle or bounding box collision detection. Um, this is the type of collision detection we did in our previous game. Um, many of our examples we use this bounding box collision detection uh, but I want to take this chance to really kind of go over it to focus on that format uh, or that form of collision detection. Alright, so uh, what we have here on the screen uh, that's not part of the shell code that I've added in is this kind of modified sprite struct. This looks pretty familiar here. I've uh, taken out the animation stuff uh, and I have this BX and BY for bounding X and bounding Y and W and H for width and height. So uh, this isn't the, the sprite struct we've been using all along. I've just sort of modified it here. I uh, just wanted to point that out so you, uh, you guys can see that. So uh, good. Now what I need to do is create uh, some new variables here that will allow me to, to control this demo application. Uh, so a couple things I'm going to want is I'm going to want a boolean called bound uh, so they equal to false. That's just going to dictate whether or not I want to render my bounding box at any given time. Uh, then I'm going to have also another boolean called collision and that is basically going to say, it's going to tell me, hey, we, we have collision. Um, I'm going to have a couple sprite objects. So I'll have sprite ball 1 and sprite ball 2 and then I'm going to do some initialization. I'm going to take this uh, moment right here to, to mention that uh, there, there's a very big difference between detecting collision and doing something with that. Uh, these videos I'm just going to focus on detecting the collision. Um, it's very game specific what happens when a collision occurs. Maybe the objects bounce, maybe they get destroyed, maybe nothing happens, maybe they just stop dead in their tracks, maybe you score a point, you know. Uh, the what of, of what happens when there's collision detection is by and large entirely up to you. Um, so I'm not going to get too much into that. There's a lot that can be said about it um, and it's all very specific to your particular scenario. So uh, just wanted to kind of focus here on the fact that we're doing coll collision detection algorithms, um, not necessarily collision resolution algorithms. Alright, uh, so that being said, let me go ahead and just drop some initial values into uh, my sprites here, so I'm going to do ball x, that's uh, going to equal 0, or ball 1, y is going to equal 0, and then ball 2.x is going to equal width divided by 2, 2, and ball 2.y is going to equal height divided by 2. Alright, great. Um, that just sort of kick things off for us here. Now what we want to do is we're going to, we're going to load in an image that I have made in Photoshop uh, specifically to highlight the pros and cons uh, of our different collision detection algorithms and we're going to go ahead and work with that. So I'm down here in my project initialization section. Um, you'll notice I'm not creating Allegro bitmaps. Uh, I've been doing that a long time but now I'm just going to start bringing them directly into the structs uh, for simplicity's sake. Uh, so I'm going to do ball1.image going to equal al load bitmap and that image is orb.png right. uh, I'm just going to copy this line of code here paste it, turn that into ball2, they'll both be the same image and then what I want to do is I want to set up some initial values here I'm going to do ball1.width it's going to equal al get bitmap width and I'm going to pass in ball one dot image just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, paste it, and it will be ball one dot height will equal AL get bitmap height. And then I'm just gonna copy both of these. I've been typing all day, I don't really feel like typing all that much. I'm gonna change that to two, that to a two, come over here and change that to a two and that to a two. Alright. So cheating a little bit. Um, Next, I want to set up the bounding, uh, the bound x and bound y. It may seem like the bound x and bound y is kind of redundant data, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I'm going to do bound x is going to equal ball to, uh, or ball 1 uh, width 
divided by 2. So you're thinking, why do I have bx is equal to uh, the width divided by 2? Why not just keep using width divided by 2? Uh, and the reason is we want to be able to manipulate our bounding box separately. Um, however, your width divided by 2 is a good place to start. So I'm going to have ball 1 dot y is going to equal ball 1 dot height divided by 2. And of course, I'm just going to copy that and paste it. Turn that into a 2, turn that into a 2 and two, and two. All right, great. So that helps with our initialization quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to my rendering section real quick. I'm gonna skip update for now. I'm gonna jump over to my rendering section. It just sort of sets some stuff up there. So what I wanna do is, uh, first and foremost, obviously I gotta draw uh, the images on the screen. So I'm gonna do an AL draw bitmap, and I'm going to pass in Ball two. I'm going to draw these in reverse order, so ball two is, is drawn behind ball one. I'm going to do ball two uh, image, and then it's going to be ball two dot x minus ball two dot width divided by two, and ball two dot y minus ball two dot height divided by two, and a zero for our flags. All right, and I'll just grab that line paste it, and that'll become ball one, ball one, ball one, ball one, and ball one. All right, and that'll draw the images on the screen. Now I want to specify my bounding box. I'm going to say if bound. If we want to draw our bounding box, I'm going to do an AL, draw, filled, rectangle. This will represent our bounding box. And those images going to be, or that this position going to be ball one dot x minus ball one dot bx comma ball one dot y minus ball one dot by comma ball one dot x plus ball one dot bx comma ball one dot y plus ball one dot by. Those are the two coordinate positions that will dictate the upper left and lower right hand corners of our bounding box. And then finally my color, I'm going to do an NAL map RGBA underscore F. I know that's, we've used this only a couple times here, but I just want to use float values. I want to also dictate an alpha channel uh, so that our image can be, uh, or our bounding box will be slightly see-through. And so I'm going to do 0 0.6 comma 0 comma 0 0.6 comma 0 0.6. So it'll be a 0 0.6 opacity. It's going to be the hideous magenta color. All right, so that's my one. I'm just gonna copy this, paste it again, and we're gonna do ball two, ball two, ball two, ball two, so on and so forth. I feel like a broken record. It occurs to me it won't be long before future generations have no idea what a record even is. But that's tangent. Uh, that's a tangent that I don't need to go into right now. It's too late for that. So I'm gonna say if collision. Um, now this is what we want to do if a collision has occurred. And if a collision has occurred, I'm just going to do AL draw text, and I'm going to use font 18. The color is going to be AL map RGB uh, 255, 255, 255. I'm going to do white. Its X will be width divided by 2. Its height will be 20. Its flags will be Allegro line center. And the text will be Collision. Awesome. Okay. Should be able to run this here. And it's not too exciting. We got the two orbs. One is up here for us to move around. This is the image I created. I uh, created this image specifically so we could see some of the, the pros and cons of the different styles of collision detection. All right. So we have our, our images being drawn on the screen. Everything's going good. Let's look at our updates. A couple things we want to be able to do in our updates. Uh, we want to be able to move our objects around. We also want to uh, uh, start detecting our collision. So basically, I'm going to do um, the collision, or I'm sorry, not the collision detection, the, uh, the update that we're, we're going to do. So I'm going to say if keys sub up, uh, then we're going to say ball one dot x, or I'm sorry, y minus equals five. Else, if keys up down, we'll say ball one dot y 
plus equals 5, and then if key sub left, then ball 1 so dot x minus equals 5, else if keys sub right, then we're going to do ball 1 dot x plus equals 5. Alright, great. We also want to test bounding boxes, so I'm going to say if key, or test to see if we want to turn the bounding boxes on. If key subspace, then I'm going to say bound equals true, else bound equals false. So basically, if we hold down the space bar, we'll see our bounding boxes, we let go of the space bar, it goes away. Alright, great. So that's uh, that, that's nothing new here. I'll just run this. Um, this isn't going to look anything out of the ordinary. Our ball moves. If I hold down uh, space, we see our bounding boxes. You'll notice how much area we waste here with our bounding boxes. That's the reason I want to be able to control bounding boxes separately from width, um, because that's that's uh, that's too much. Like that there would render a collision, even though that's not even close to a collision. So um, we'll look at that here in a second once we get our collision detection out and figured out. So I had talked before about the, the collision detection algorithm uh, and at its, at, its, at its finest, at its most minute um, with, with rectangles, we're basically dealing with the edges of the rectangle uh, in the fast and, and often confusing way that I like to say it to just throw everyone off is if object A's left is more left than object B's right, object A's right is more right than object B's left, object A's up is more up than object B's down, and object A's down is more down than object B's up, we have collision. Okay, uh, so basically, all four of those statements have to be true. If all four of those statements are true, we have collision. If only three of those statements are true, we don't. Um, so we just we just need to test. It's an if statement with four uh, four for clauses, if you will. Uh, and if it comes back true, we have collision. If it comes back false, we don't. And that's just bounding rectangles. Uh, we're just testing the edges of one rectangle against the edges of another rectangle in the same world coordinate system. So, in a nutshell, it just looks like one massive if statement. I'm just going to say if ball one dot x plus ball one dot bx. So this will be the right side of ball one. So the right has to be more right, thus greater than ball two dot x minus ball two dot bx. All right. So the right is more right than the left. Next line, ball one dot x minus ball one dot dx is less than ball two. Uh, oh, and I have a typo I see here. That should be ball two. Uh, ball two dot x plus ball two dot dx. Okay, so that means the left is more left than the right. All right. Then ampersand then ball one dot y plus ball one dot by is greater than ball two dot y minus ball two dot by and ball one dot y minus ball one dot by be less than ball two dot y plus ball two dot by. Okay, awesome. If that statement is true, we have collision. And I'm simply going to say collision equals true. Else, collision equals false. Now it's important to note that uh, C plus plus does this thing called short circuiting by default. That's to say, if it checks just the first statement and it's proven to be false, it doesn't bother checking the rest. It short circuits by default, um, which is really nice because this is going to be running every single cycle. So we don't want to have to do all four comparisons every single cycle if the first one isn't true. Um, so that, that saves us on some efficiency there. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, try this out. We'll run it and we will see collision. Bam. And obviously you can see we have a problem. You know, obviously that's rendering collision. That's rendering collision. If you wonder why, I turn on my bounding boxes, and you can see see exactly what's going on there. But even even that, they're not even close. Even that is registering um, a collision. 
which leads us to, to two points. The first is that when you're making your art, your, your image width should be as tight against the image as possible. You see how I have all that extra space, um, and that's just wasteful. So, and it causes issues like this. Um, the second is we need to modify our bounding boxes to be a little bit more accurate. So, right now our bounding boxes are, are pretty, pretty big. Let's go ahead and, and work some stuff out here. Due to the unique shape, I'm going to make my bounding boxes a little bit wider than they are tall. So I'm going to come back up here to where we create our bounding boxes. Um, and we have these programmatically generated uh, items here. So we, let's keep on track with that. Let's say we'll use that and then we'll say minus 20 and minus 40. I'm going off the top of my head. I really have no idea how this is going to look. But this is how you figure it out is you test. So, and minus 40. Let's give that a whirl. And now, uh, oh, bounding box way too small. Way too small. But you can see, so now I have obvious collision, but I'm not catching it until the bounding boxes come in there. So, obviously, way too small. So, let's try 10 and 20 versus 10 and 20. And that seems better. So,. Not registering collision there, perfect. We do still get some false positives, you see. Um, that can happen, that's registering a collision. Uh, we also get some false negatives. Uh, you can see here I'm going right, I mean, we're, we're technically colliding there. Um, but since the bounding box is not registered the collision, um, you know, nothing we can do about that. So there's something to be said about the accuracy of the bounding box. It's, it's fairly efficient. Um, however, you do lose a little bit of accuracy there. Um, for instance, that's definitely not a collision right there. That's not a collision, but our bounding boxes think it is. So, okay. So that is, <clears throat> in a nutshell, bounding, bounding box or bounding rectangle collision detection. Um, it's simple. Uh, it's moderately efficient. There's no really, really, really efficient collision detection algorithms to my knowledge. I mean, all of them take time, um, but it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Um, so slightly efficient, simple, uh, effective if you're using bounding rectangles. Now we're using circles in this in this this demo, so we can see some of the shortcomings with using a rectangle. We have some sides that, that don't register correctly. We have some corners that are throwing uh, false false positives, um, and so there's there's a better way we can handle orbs, uh, and we'll look at that in our next video.